Admiral Benjamin Davis looked into the infinite darkness of space through the immense panoramic window of the International Space Station. His face showed a severe tension. That serene silence deceived he knew that great things were about to happen. Alien probes had been detected by sensors in the depths of the solar system. Spacious and geometric ships, technological constructions so advanced that they left the human engineering to look like rough toys. Despite all communication efforts, the probes had not responded. They were simply floating in orbits. A sharp sound signal removed silence from the International Space Station operations room. Davis turned, his face worried as he stared at the monitoring screen. Status report, he demanded with a firm voice. Admiral, the alien probes have moved, the operations officer replied in a tense voice. Coordinates suggest an exit trajectory of the solar system. Davis scratched his teeth, frustrated. As always, more questions than answers from these enigmatic creatures. All right, call the emergency council immediately. I want everyone in the meeting room in 20 minutes. He walked away from the window, the red cover of the Starfleet swinging. The USS Colombo Command spacecraft was stuck here, but this high orbital station would have to be abandoned if they reached a fighting situation. Exactly 20 minutes later, Davis looked around the closed chamber. The top scientific, military, and political advisors on Earth looked back at him with equally tense gazes. Humanity has been humiliated, Davis began with no quarrels. We found that our presumption of being the only intelligent beings in the cosmos was wrong. These alien probes are technologically superior to anything we've built. And worse, they refuse to communicate with us. Maybe they simply did not recognize our contact attempts, Dr. Zara Mirzahi suggested. The eminent Iranian scientist had led the efforts of the communication team. Davis shoved his head firmly. Our transmissions included all the basic universal mathematical and scientific concepts they would have understood if it had been their will. But no, they just ignored us. A silence reigned over the group, all considering the dark implications. Finally, Colonel Marcus Ford showed himself, his face hard as stone. Sir, I recommend embodying this first wave as a disguised attack. We should take a full defensive posture and prepare our forces for the next alien invasion. A very provocative position, Colonel, Ambassador Tomas Kozlov replied with a slight Russian accent. We do not know the total intentions or capabilities of this alien force. To rush a confrontation would be imprudent, at least. Davis raised a hand, silencing the two men. Both have valid points. It is true that we cannot assume explicit hostility at the moment. But neither can we ignore what these probes represent a warning that there are others in the universe that are much more advanced than we are. He stood up, laying his hands on the conference table. Here's my initial order. First, we will massively increase our scientific efforts to develop technologies that equal and ultimately exceed alien capabilities. Dr. Mitsahi will have all the resources necessary for this task. Zara liked it, would finally have the resources to show off his talent. Secondly, Davis continued, we will simultaneously expand our military and space exploration forces. We will drastically increase the budgets of the Starfleet and the International Space Agency. Colonel Ford will oversee coordination and training. Ford smiled a little. He lived for that kind of challenge. At last, we will work through the appropriate diplomatic channels. Ambassador Kozlov, you will continue to bring the land nations together on a unified political and economic front to deal with this threat. Kozlov crossed his arms impassively. It will be a tough but possible challenge. The countries of the world will need to put aside their differences for the greatest threat. Davis went on. Then we have our course. From this moment, all of humanity will enter a new era, the era of interstellar exploration and alien contact. Whatever direction our journey takes, we need to move forward as one race united. He looked at the determined faces around the table. Otherwise, we will be easily erased. Six months later, a team from the Hyperspace Engineering Task Force led by Zara Mirzahi was working frenetically on the main asteroid belt. Their new advanced secret facility was focused on building and testing a revolutionary hyperspace folding engine designed to pave the way for travel beyond the solar system. The huge reactor of mercury matter shone in the giant underground chamber. 
semicircular holographic screens illuminated the controls, the monitoring panels shining with constantly flowing data. Zara passed a hand swallowed by dark hair when an alarm caught her attention. She cleverly looked at the floating numbers. Ready for the final charging phase? She announced in a loud voice, looking around the camera for her top engineers and technicians. Systems ready to start the frame sequence, his loyal assistant Indra Dallo replied, focusing on console readings. Zara exhaled slowly, adjusting her protective glasses. She studied the command counterpart on the high deck. Are all antimatter controls locked in the green? Operator Stav Bayan sat down, his pale face bathed by the cold light of the surrounding holograms. Yes, Doctor. The nucleus is contained and stable. Starting external containment diaphragm, Jenna Morse announced from the adjacent station. The giant chamber shook when the plasma resonant shields activated around them. Dangerous containment machinery was a brutal necessity for this kind of space-folding experiment that transgressed the laws of physics. Zara looked around again and then shrugged her head. Well, guys, we're going to conquer the impossible today. In my brand. Three, two, one. As she dropped her fist, the machines came to life with a very loud noise. A wave of frightening energy spilled out of the immense folding reactor in a glowing glow. And then, a new signature of threatening energy shone on the facility's sensors. Before anyone could react, an overwhelming magnetic pulse broke into the camera without warning. The control panels choked, some exploding with sparks. The ground shook like a violent earthquake. What the hell? Zara shouted, clinging to the desk when a wave of force struck her. The emergency alarm made a loud noise, and then a shout of panic sounded from one of the technicians at the entrances. Doctor, detection's on us. An alien probe just appeared in the facility. Before Zara could respond, an overwhelming ray of alien energy spilled through the reinforced walls. The systems were instantly roasted, a devouring fireball emerging from the reactor chamber. A terrible heat wave erupted towards them. Out in space, a bright, angular explorer probed through the asteroid field, the metal outer tentacles bending. It floated quietly beyond the debris and ruins of the hyperspace installation, having left its mark once again on this insignificant new species. Days later, Admiral Davis marched furiously to the control area at the International Space Station, his face appearing to be furious. The destroyers Sykes and Okuda flanked Colombo in defensive formation, while another crew of officers gathered, all with heavy expressions. Damage report, Davis demanded as he reached the situation table. Several of the chief commanders and scientific advisors were already present, including Dr. Mirsahi. It was Colonel Ford who responded, his severe features as he transmitted the latest data. The hyperspace installation in the asteroid belt has been completely destroyed, sir. Initial expertise indicates that it was a pulse of directed alien energy that penetrated our more advanced defenses as if they did not exist. Mursahi swallowed it dry, blushing with anger and humiliation. She analyzed the reading panels continuously updated. It was my team that suffered the attack. We had just completed the first successful folding test when a massive energy alien probe just appeared and destroyed everything. Davis, with the sides of his nose dilating slightly, asked, Are you low? Twenty dead so far, Ford notified. But with structural damage and exposure to radiation, that number can increase. Lieutenant Ibrahim and his team are coordinating the rescue operations in the belt. Davis felt it. We need to issue a strong diplomatic condemnation for this unprovoked attack. Ambassador Kozla, you. Wait, Mursahi interrupted his face lit with excitement as he looked at an update that had just appeared. We managed to download some vital data from the antimatter nucleus before the energy pulse. Critical information for the development of a hyperspace reactor. Despite the terrible tragedy, Admiral Davis felt confident when he analyzed the techno-scientific information. With these data and advances, I was getting closer and closer to having an alien-like technology. As the discussions calmed down, a coded audio broadcast sounded through the speakers. Admiral, I am receiving a signal from Ambassador Kozlov. He says it's a red code priority. Davis nodded. Okay, put him on the line. Kozlov's creeping voice sounded a moment later. Admiral, I found something terrible. 
An alien faction infiltrated our governments from the beginning. The heads turned suddenly. How are you? Davis grumbled. They call themselves the Watchmen. They have manipulated our alien encounters for decades, both friendly and hostile. They've got everything under control. Davis' face turned brightly red. For all the hell. Traitors, Kozlov, get every piece of information you can about these bastards. Understood? Kozlov, out. The line was blurred, everybody in the room still processing the shock. Davis straightened, his mind turning. Zara, you were right. This folding facility was clearly a key target. Mursahi agreed. The question is whether the Watchmen were trying to protect their own folding technology. Or they want to prevent us from developing the capability completely. Both are not so attractive options, Davis resounded, passing a hand through the hair. Colonel Ford whispered laughingly. Sir, may I suggest an approach? Use this new event as an excuse to take a more aggressive stance. Davis glanced sharply at the colonel. Explain, Ford. Well, it's simple. We publicly announce that we have discovered the alien infiltration and their attempt to sabotage us. We use this to strengthen our military forces and take control of planetary defense operations. And then, when these watchers or any other threat appears, we will be mobilized and ready to confront them. A bold and very risky strategy, Kozlov's virtual ambassador commented, his holographic image oscillating. If we move too fast against these alien forces, we risk attacking the friendly by mistake too. Davis twisted his lips, considering. All options seemed to contain traps and disadvantages. Finally, he gave a firm tint. Well, we're going to adopt a hybrid approach for now. We will strengthen our defensive forces and prepare for battle, as the colonel suggested. But we will continue to seek diplomatic contact first, with the military arsenal and only as a last resort. Ford waved unwillingly, while Zara seemed more convinced. Davis stood up, visualizing the group with a firm look. Command team, we have new targets. Dr. Misahi, continue your folding research but this time with the highest security and secrecy protocols. Colonel Ford, I want all the major fleets redistributed all over the world. We will not allow innocent citizens to be targeted again. They seriously agreed. Davis breathed deeply, his sharp blue eyes. We are in unknown waters now, ladies and gentlemen. But we will respond to this unknown threat with all the humility, courage and determination that humanity can gather. Outside in the darkness of space, the huge ship Captain USS Colombo sailed, its external lights flashing against the infinite void. On the deck of the main bridge, the Admiral sat on his chair, observing the flashing monitoring screens. The tension was present all the time. All stations report complete defensive preparation, sir, communications officer Makula Cho formally. Warships in tactical formation along the perimeter. Davis waved tired. Very well. Keep maximum vigilance. I won't let another alien attack take us by surprise. From the center of the deck, Chief Engineer Indra Dalil turned from the control station. Her face was bright with sweat when she climbed the ramp to the Admiral's seat. Sir, I have finished integrating the folding codes into the main engineering core, she announced in an urgent tone. But it will dangerously overload our Arthrium reactors if we try a transition. Davis dropped a low whistle studying the star data on the screen. I am forced to agree with you, engineer. A fold at this point would be very risky. Not to mention that we do not want to scare the alien forces even further with an unannounced hyperspace journey. How to order, sir, Dalil agreed. She shrugged her lips, obviously frustrated that years of work had not yet produced a viable prototype. Before anyone could say more, the alarms on the deck roared in a sharp sound. Signals on the sensor grid, Admiral, Erickson, the tactical officer, yelled. Various massive energy readings in fold approaching, alien origins. Davis got up quickly, his face tight of focus. Place force shields at maximum combat standards. Put all fleets on alert. Angry crows sounded all over the deck when the laser guns were activated. Blue holographic panels shone tracking several alien star signatures emerging in the defense perimeter. Confirmed. Erickson shrugged his forehead. It's the same kind of spacecraft that attacked our folding facility. 
I detect a powerful fleet of at least 40 hostile ships. Davis scratched his teeth. His body was tense. It's a declaration of war. Then, he hit a button on the arm of the chair. Here's the Admiral for all fleets. Hostilities were initiated by alien forces. We're under attack. I repeat, we're under attack. Take on Delta combat training immediately and prepare defensive batteries. One of the holographic screens flashed, taking on a strategic 3D display of human cobra forming warships nearby. At the core, the USS Colombo took a vigilant posture, the long ion cannons oscillating to meet the targets. Davis pointed to Ericsson. Identify the enemy captain ship and concentrate all the main cannons on it. If we can eliminate your commander, maybe we can discourage the rest of the fleet from attacking. Understood, sir, the tactician replied, typing furiously on his console, waiting for the right moment to reach. Space was now a laser war of particles and bright rockets. When the alien fleet opened fire first, Colombo deflector shields absorbed the initial shock. Shit, they hit first and strongly, Davis cried holding on to his seat when the ship shook violently. Ericsson, fire back, looking at your main loads. Nuclear and plasma weapons opened fire, turning the battlefield into explosions and glow. The USS Colombo shook terribly, the outer shell exploding under constant bombardment. Sweat began to form in Davis' skin as he remained shouting orders to his crew. Scuffs holding onto the shores, but suffering severe tricks, Ericsson, his tense voice, we will lose structural containment of the shell soon. Continue insisting, Lieutenant, Davis shouted, shaking his fists with frustration. We have to find a way through them. It was then that Davis looked at engineering team, then paralyzed around the exposed folding controls. A desperate idea comes up. Dallal, he yelled, descending from the seat to where she was working frenetically. The engineer turned, fear crossing her sweaty face. I'm trying to get a shot with the folding reactor, sir, but it's unstable beyond. Forget it, Davis cried, holding his shoulder tightly. Listen, we need to find a way to make this work. Now, even if it's just a blind leap. Dallal's eyes blinked. Sir, this is madness. Our exact location in space would be completely undefined after such a fold. We could emerge in the midst of a supernova or in the heart of a black hole. Davis shook his head fiercely. Yes, I know the risk. But that's it, or we'll be annihilated here by this alien fleet. We need an advantage, any advantage. For a moment, they both remained silent as the whole world seemed to spin around them. So, finally, Dalil agreed. Very well, Admiral, I'll do that. But I'll need blind security coordinates too. Anywhere. Davis tightened his shoulder firmly and then turned to face Colombo's team. All stations, listen carefully. Prepare for an unconventional hyperspace maneuver on blind coordinates. Soon, all hands on your stations. In a synchronized movement, the human officers spread around the deck working together. On the engineering deck, Dallal started the charging sequence of the antimatter reactor with his fingers trembling. Main power supply of the core charged to 92%. She shouted, the data floating to her overcoming all standard safety breaks. So the space around them seemed to be tearing. An impossible distortion opened far beyond Colombo nose, as if the fabric of reality was being pulled in opposite directions violently. Transition to interstellar displacement in five, four, three. Davis grabbed both sides of the chair, breathing stuck. The alien weapons batteries concentrated on them. This was the end if the folding failed. Two. One. Jump now. An explosion of white light consumed everything. Reality twisted into a spiral, and then... Nothing but an indescribable void. On the main deck of the Captain Alien vessel Vinkter, High Commander Thrilke looked at the momentary hyperspace fence where the human vessel had disappeared. Your mind is a little confused. Where were the bodily forms? He teletransmitted to subordinate officers in codes. Unknown. Leader. Chief Strategist Licklu replied. The readings are confusing. Our systems are unable to track their final destination after their maneuver. Thrilke went on. They were not to have such technology yet. Redirect an eighth of our ships for immediate scan for dimensional deviations and space-time anomalies. 
these primitive beings cannot hide from us for long. In the unexplored depths of space, billions of light years from any familiar star, Colombo emerged from the unstable bend. In one stroke, all the lights blinked, and then they died completely for several seconds. Only the murmur of emergency energy remained, providing a sinister glow. Status of all stations, immediately, Davis yelled. The consoles crashed intermittent data as the teams assessed the damage. Dalil, the chief engineer, sneezed as she tried to gather her reports. Tragically overloaded folding reactors, Admiral. Containment fields at critical limit. Davis rubbed his tense face, his sharp blue eyes studying the fragments of star data that flashed. And our location? Any reference point or nearby system? None, sir. Erickson's voice carried a badly disguised fear. We're nowhere, literally, billions of light years from any mapped celestial body. A heavy silence floated over the deck. Davis inspired deep, keeping the calm with effort. Keep the compost, guys. Let's look at the situation and... Admiral, sensor technician Copeland suddenly yelled, his hands passing over the controls. I'm detecting debris and space wreckage. Several large objects floating nearby. Davis crossed the deck to the man station, studying the data. Probable source? Sir, the debris corresponds to armament signatures of the last war between the Drenals and the Carillion Domain. An epic battle took place here. Davis got scared. The war between those two ancient alien civilizations had been legendary in its scale and fierceness. Apparently, they had been transported not only through space, but also through time and reality. Any threat from the debris? Davis grumbled. Copeland shrugged his head. No energy readings, weapons, or surviving crews. It's all. Just space junk, very old. Davis breathed relieved. Well, so we'll send teams to recover any useful resources from the remains. He raised his eyes to the stunned crew on the deck. Team, our situation is critical, but not desperate. Dowell's measurements show that the reactors can still withstand at least one or two more folds, if we can find a re-entry point in the coordinates. The deck calmed down a little bit with that promise of hope. However, Davis kept the appearance concerned, knowing that even this improvised plan was a risky bet. They were effectively lost in the vastness of space. Gather your forces, all of you, he commanded, letting his voice resonate firmly. There will be no lack of leadership or determination here today. Keep your stations and prepare for more turbulence. We'll find a way home. Hours later, the rescue teams were back with all the cargo recovered from the space debris. Davis remained on deck monitoring the operations. Nothing of great value so far, sir, Dalil admitted with regret as his technicians analyzed the findings. Some raw minerals and legacy circuits. Maybe alien fuel if we're lucky. Davis agreed, resigned. So Copeland suddenly got excited. Hey, wait a second. I detected a solid alien signature in one of the larger debris. Dallow quickly approached as Copeland manipulated the controls. A blue-colored holographic visualization floated over the console, a strange alien metal capsule partially buried in the frozen debris. This seems to be an old emergency data capsule, Copeland commented, studying the carved patterns probably from one of the alien warships that got involved in the battle. Can you access your content? Davis asked. Dallow shrugged his forehead. Alien encoding languages are incomprehensible, but I believe our computer systems can eventually decrypt them. I'll bring the capsule to engineering and see what we can find in it. Davis shrugged his head. Do that, engineer. If that thing contains the right navigation data, it may be our only exit ticket from this forgotten desert. Many troubling hours passed as the teams worked frenetically to break the alien codes. Davis barely blinked while analyzing the incomplete data that was gradually being fed to the screens of his seat. Finally, Dallow stepped into the deck, his face shining from sweat. We decrypted at least part of the files, Admiral. It seems that this capsule contained historical and scientific data from a long-lost alien research facility in this sector. Davis got up, his heart accelerated. So there's an alien facility here? A base station or planet with resources and supplies? Dallow shrugged his head cautiously. 
it is difficult to determine with incomplete information, but we detected a slight signature of alien energy some distance from here. It could be our best plan. Davis turned to the sensor officer with a fierce expression. Copeland, focus all the main and solar sensors on this alien signature. It is an absolute priority to trace its origin. Yes, sir. The man started typing quickly as the long beams of Colombo's sensor scrolled through space looking for that piece of energy. Hours have passed. Davis stood by Dallal's side, both observing the inconsistent readings shivering on the screens. Suddenly, I have the origin, Admiral. It's projecting from an abandoned planet to just a few systems from here. A star hologram rose, showing a cracked, dry, completely lifeless rock ball. However, flashing on the north pole of the surface, there was a tiny shimmering light. In summary, Mrs. Dallal, Davis grumbled. The engineer looked at him. That is the only hope we have, sir. An incomprehensible source of alien energy in a seemingly dead world. If we can reach that facility, there may be technology or resources that will allow us to escape this existential plane. Davis agreed. Then that's exactly where we're going. His chief operations officer advanced on deck, tense face. Sir? Gather your best assault and preparation team, Davis ordered. It's time to find out what these aliens left behind in this place. A few minutes later, Colombo emitted rays of subtle energy, its short-range bending system activating carefully, and then the giant cruiser jumped out of darkness into the orbit of the dead world ahead. On the main deck, Dalol swallowed dry when sensors transmitted the first data from the alien surface. No breathable atmosphere or active biosphere. But there's an energy reading in this northern hemisphere. She drew a blinking red area on a 3D map. The signature is weakening, but it's definitely a lasting source of artificial energy. Davis agreed, looking at the cracked planet full of craters. It must be such an installation mentioned in the capsule records. Let's find out what it is. An inspection team came down to find out. Through the cameras, Davis observed the desolate mineral plains and sharp peaks unfolding. Then, in a huge cliff, the rusted shapes of an ancient alien installation materialized, the remains of twisted metal extending in various directions. A creepy voice sounded through Colombo's radio channels. Here is Colonel Ford, Admiral. Our readings confirm that this is definitely an ancient alien research facility, apparently built by multiple species. Many of the components seem incompatible, but recondited. Davis shut his teeth, afraid of what that word might mean. In other words, Ford completely advanced technology beyond our current knowledge. I'm afraid so, sir. My team has put together some strange code components, but they're still complete puzzles. Understood. Do your sensors detect any remaining power source or resources in the facility? A silence as the crew continued their reconnaissance scan. So Ford's voice came back, this time with animation. I'm reading something surprising now, sir. There is an apparently intact central lock, with an energy signature still active. It looks like a kind of portal, of hyperspace folding. A frightened silence fell on the deck when this news reached Davis' ears. An alien folding portal. Such miraculous technology would be the key to escaping its interstellar limbo. Excellent work, Colonel, Davis exclaimed. Advise your technicians to determine whether the portal is still operational. Understood, Admiral. One warning, though. At first glance, this portal is much more advanced than anything in our current technological leverage. Davis made a carrot, knowing the underlying implications of Ford's measurement words. The temptation to risk accessing such alien technology would be enormous, but the consequences could also be catastrophic. I understand your reluctance to rely too much on aliens, Colonel. For now, proceed with all the precautions. I'm going to have our best folding minds ready for integration, but nothing will happen without a full assessment. Just keep that location safe until... Another bipe on the channels interrupted Davis, forcing him to pay attention to Copeland's display. His face stunned when he saw the new star readings. Colonel Ford, I have bad news. Bad, bad news. Speak, sir, Ford's voice returned, now with a touch of restlessness. Davis breathed deeply trying to keep the composure. A new massive star force has just entered the orbit of this system, 
weapons activated and shields at maximum. Sensors confirm they're the hostile aliens we were running from before. There was a sudden silence on the radio as they both processed this unexpected nightmare. Ford soon recovered the composition. Understood, returning immediately. Abandoned the alien installation, all the teams. This technology will have to wait. Negative. Ford, Davis found his touch of command again. Stay downstairs and defend that location at all costs. This alien portal could be our last resort if things get too ugly here. A brief silence before Ford responded firmly. Understood, sir. Here we will resist. Davis pointed to Dallal and his engineering team. Prepare as much as we can of our power and folding systems so that we can exploit them. Our freedom depends on it. Turning to Erickson, the tactical officer. Give the general alarm to the entire fleet, lieutenant. Raise all offensive and defensive batteries. We'll have to face these alien bastards again. As the battle sirens sounded, Colombo ionic cannons rose up, shining with mortal power. On the main deck, Admiral Davis swallowed the knot in his throat, praying that it would be enough this time. And then the explosion started. Colombo's shield seemed to be failing under the massive bombardment of alien plasma weapons. Through the deck glass, Davis observed countless rays of destructive energy raining over his ship. Status on the front shields, he yelled. Only 14% remaining integrity, sir. Erickson's voice was tense. The ventral shield generators have already collapsed. Davis closed his teeth. Your fleet was being massacred by a much superior alien force in technology. They barely had time to try to understand the systems of the mysterious abandoned alien facility before the invaders emerged from nowhere. The deck shook violently when another plasma impact thundered against the overloaded shields of Colombo. Dallow yelled from the engineering console. The reactors can't stand much longer. We need to step back and calculate our next game. Davis shrieked briefly. No captain, even one of his fiber, would voluntarily sacrifice his crew in a lost confrontation. Very well. He activated the communication channel of the entire fleet. Attention all ships. Here's the Admiral. Start evasive maneuvering protocols and emergency tactical withdrawal. Ford, get the ship back. At that moment, a shocking shock shook the deck when a dense beam of plasma exploded against the scattered shields. Consoles and equipment exploded in a spark rain as the crew was thrown out of their positions. Knocking at his feet, Davis noticed with alarm that a huge crack had spread through the deck's outer shell, exposing his environment to the frozen vacuum. Cutting alarms sounded as the inner atmosphere began to be sucked. Automatic emergency ceiling enabled, she screamed Dallow from where she had been thrown against a wall. Huge metal plates started slipping all over the deck perimeter, sealing the gap. Davis observed, crazy, as the crew members were sucked through the open rombo before the lids could close it. Tragically, Copeland fell among the victims. His body quickly disappeared into the vacuum before the automatic doors closed him. Davis tightened his fists. Deeply saddened by this loss, so close Copeland had been an excellent strategist and friend. Finally, the emergency lock was completed and the deck atmosphere was restored. But the damage was already done. Several critical sections remained powerless and the toxic smoke from fried equipment floated through the air. Admiral, Mirzahi's weak voice came through the static as she dragged into a miraculously intact workstation. I got a reading of the alien portal. It seems that the plasma impacts overwhelmed him to the critical point. Significant? Davis asked urgently. He's unstable, Admiral. The scientist coughed loudly. The entire alien folding matrix is about to enter a catastrophic overload. If it breaks, space-time collapse will consume everything in this system. Horror flooded Davis as he was digesting this terrible revelation. Their last resort against the overwhelming alien forces was about to be their own destruction. Mirzahi, how much time remains until the critical overload? The scientist looked firmly at the floating graphs. No more than a few minutes, at most. Alien plasma pulses continued to accelerate degradation. Through the blurred reflection of the emergency displays, Davis could see the flying alien ships opening fire again. There was no chance of escape now. Admiral! Erickson's voice broke through the chaos. 
massive power leaks from the portal. I think it's happening. Colombo himself seemed to tremble as all systems flashed crazy as the imminent collapse of the alien folding matrix threatened its existence. Davis looked sadly at his remaining loyal crew. This would then be the end of their journey, destroyed on the very threshold of a new realm of alien understanding. But at least they had fought with all their strength until the last. Suddenly, an urgent vibe echoed from the deceased Copeland's assistant station. He frenetically consulted the star data. Admiral, more alien signatures emerging countless ship-sized signatures. What? Davis looked at the remote display, his chin falling. Huge black silhouettes began to emerge around the dead planet's sphere, their giant shapes blocking the starlight. They were alien warships, but of a different design than the force that attacked them. Davis could hardly believe when he recognized the familiar alien signatures of this new emerging fleet. To hell, it's the Delissimos, he murmured with astonishment. The Delissimos were an ancient and mystical alien race of formidable warriors. They had long since disappeared into the depths of uncharted space, carrying their powerful weapons with them. And now they were coming back. Dozens of their stunning battle cruisers lit their multicolored weapons as reinforced resonance shields erected along their arachnoid casks. All hostile alien ships, get out of this system immediately. The deep and metallic voice of a Delissimo commander screamed through all channels of communication. You're violating sacred lands. And with these words, the Dallasima fleet cannons fired an overwhelming torrent of plasma fire and particle rays swallowing the Vinkter ships into a colorful hell of divine power. The alien cruisers were barely able to create shields before they were destroyed by a terrible force. Those who tried to retreat were pursued by fiery safeguards that guaranteed their total annihilation. So, as quickly as it had begun, the battle ended in a single overwhelming abyss. The invading alien forces that were about to destroy humanity were simply gone. Commandant of the human starship, came the Delissimo voice again. You and your crew are now under our direct protection. Prepare for more folding instructions. Davis could barely find words when a series of folding navigation codes appeared in Mirzahi's panels. A. Escape route. Dalal, turn on the main reactors, Davis yelled. We're folding to these coordinates right now. Your chief engineer hesitated just a moment before he assented and began the preparations for the folding. Despite the severe damage, Colombo could still make a short jump at least. The secondary engines yelled, sending a resonant trembling through the vast structure of the ship. The folding matrix flashed, channeling the remaining energy from the main reactors. And then, with a sudden flash, Colombo entered the bending vortex, leaving the abandoned alien system behind. Davis grabbed the handles of his seat as the energy of the hyperspace twisted them and pulled them in impossible underlying directions. The navigation systems seemed to be plunging into the folds of… something. After an agonizing eternity, the human cruiser emerged in a new unknown star system. Lower the folds, Davis yelled when the displays began to flash with new normal space readings. Position verified, team. There was a pause as the sensors scanned the surrounding environment. So Copeland's assistant came back, impressed. We're somewhere in the Avalon sector, sir. Not far from safe human folding gates. And there's... The man swallowed. Signatures from hundreds of other warships scattered throughout the area, all with the markings of the Terran Alliance. Absolute relief flooded Davis' chest when this surprising truth struck him. They had finally returned to human-controlled space to the security of their own unified armed forces. The radio crashed with an incoming transmission from the host fleet. Colombo, this is Earth Admiral Chen speaking. It's good to have you back, lost people. We waited for your news for a while. Prepare for folding escort to our Avalon base. On Earth, we managed to control the Watchmen. They're now trapped in heavily monitored prisons. An unbelievable laughter escaped from Davis' lips as he mentally thanked the Delissimo's allies who had rescued them at the last moment. They had finally returned home, and with a new determination shining in their hearts. This battle with the hostile aliens had not ended yet, not for a long way. Actually, I was just starting. Despite the regrettable loss of so many brave soldiers and officers as the Copeland, 
Colombo had survived his lost battle against the alien enemy and found a way back to human territory. While the spacecraft was undergoing complete repairs and refueling, Mursahi and the other scientists were working frenetically analyzing every fragment of alien data they had recovered from the debris and abandoned facility. Gradually, impressive insights began to emerge. Alien folding technology works through a fundamentally different understanding of space-time itself. Mursahi exclaimed to Davis during a briefing, Instead of folding realities like our folds do, it actually opens a portal between the underlying layers of space. Davis looked openly as bright holographic models of the alien portal floated in the meeting room. So it's almost like creating stable wormholes in an underlying reality. Exactly, the scientist enthusiastically agreed. And with this mere fraction of alien knowledge that we've recovered, we're already unlocking a whole new theoretical understanding of more advanced folding technologies. Within a few years, our own folding engineering will exceed our present limits. Davis waved, stunned by the implications. If that was just a small sample of misunderstood alien science. The following days were a torrent of frenetic activity. Teams of engineers and technicians worked 24 hours a day, adapting every extraterrestrial technology fragment recovered to the next generation of human folding engineering, weapons and engines. Davis personally oversaw the initial construction of the first large hybrid structure, a huge alien folding portal based on his own engineering but based on the revolutionary principles of alien technology. Team, Davis firmly announced, making the ecstatic technicians shut up. Good work in operationalizing this initial breakthrough. But this is only the first step and a long way to go. Now that we have a glimpse of the real alien threat out there, it would be insane not to prepare ourselves fully. He swallowed it dry. Starting immediately, this facility will be the basis of our new program of development of universal weapons. We'll use every piece of alien technology to create unparalleled new weapons and defense systems. We will make humanity unstoppable, no longer vulnerable to threats from deep space. But that will come later, Davis continued more gently. For the moment, rest and receive the glory you deserve for having survived the impossible. The human race is evolving thanks to the efforts of all of you. Beating continents, he allowed a little smile before leaving the technology lab. In Davis's mind, there was only one future ahead, one in which humanity would never again be a helpless victim of aliens. Never again.